Have you heard about Anchor? Well, it's one of the easiest ways to create a podcast. Not only is it 100% free, but it has a variety of creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or a computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast to other sites such as Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many others for you. And Anchor even allows you to make money from your podcast without a required minimum listenership. So whether you've been in the podcasting game for a long time or you're completely new to it, Anchor is so user-friendly that it's basically your one-stop shop for making a podcast. So what are you waiting for? Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. You're listening to First Fossil. Because sometimes you simply need someone to help you take that first fossil. Hello and welcome to First Fossil, a show where we learn together how to take that first Fossil toward becoming the best versions of ourselves. My name is Candace Olushala, and y'all, we are episode 100. Hey, 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 hey. Like, I'm so excited in case you can't tell. This is amazing. I have been podcasting since summer of 2020. It has literally been two years. Two years, y'all. I've been doing this for two years. Dos años, que? Yo, what? Like, I, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. This is amazing. And I have enjoyed every bit of this. The ups, the downs, the learning curves, all, all of it. This has been fantastic. And I just have to say thank you guys. I wouldn't have a podcast if someone didn't listen to it. So thank you guys so much. Especially those of you who have been OGs, ride and thrive since summer of 2020. You guys, thanks. Truly. And to my first pasitos, the patrons, thank you guys. If you're not a patron, what are you doing? You can go to my website at www.firstpaso.com and look to see how to join the patron on the podcast tab. I would love to have you guys on board, grow this community. It would be phenomenal. I also have an announcement. I actually have two announcements to make today. So first off, drum roll, please. I've launched my YouTube channel. Woo! So yes, I have a YouTube channel. It's called The Sweet Life with Candice Olushala. And that's S-W-E-E-T because um, my nickname is Candy. So obviously (laughs) it's basically a holistic YouTube channel that is going to entail different aspects of how I am living my most fulfilled life for the rest of my life and inviting you guys into that space to learn from what I'm doing. So I want to impart that knowledge on the world and it gives you opportunities to kind of get glimpses of how I do my life coaching as well. If you're looking for a life coach, I still have spots open. So you can go to my website and go to the coaching tab, click to learn more there and Let's see if we we make a great fit. I would love to go through life coaching with you guys. I have a couple coaching clients right now, and it has just been truly an honor to walk through life with them and see them make breakthroughs and grow and evolve and start having more pep in their step and more hope. And it's 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 a beautiful, beautiful process to go through life coaching. So if you do want a one-on-one coach or if you want to get a group of people together and we do group coaching, I'm down for all of that. So hit me up, let me know, and I am at your service. So that's that's the first thing, my YouTube channel. I already have stuff up there. You can feel feel free to like, subscribe, hit the notification bell for when I do post and check that out. The second thing is that I'm actually starting a second podcast called Hashtag Pizza Is Not Working Podcast. If you haven't heard of the Hashtag Pizza Is Not Working movement, it is a pharmacy advocacy movement, and it is basically highlighting how what has been happening in the world of pharmacy for a decade plus of time up until today 
is affecting both the healthcare and public health sectors in ways that the public may not realize because no one's blatantly talking about it in the truest, rawest form. And that's where I come in. I've already launched the introductory podcast episode, so I will put the links to that in the show notes for you to listen to already, just so you can have an idea of what this podcast is going to be about. And trust me, you're going to want to listen to it. You, your mama, your auntie, your second cousin, your grandmammy, like everybody, everyone's going to want to listen to this because this is affecting everyone in the country. Everyone, literally everyone is going to be impacted and has been impacted by what's happening in the world of pharmacy. And if you don't realize what's happening, you as a consumer won't know how you can get involved to help shift what's going on and actually have us have a healthy healthcare and public health system in the United States of America. So please check that out and I will let you know when we have our first official episode out So you can subscribe to that and listen to it and come on the journey with us. So yeah, that is amazing. I'm really excited to have all of these announcements on my 100th episode. This has just been a wild ride in general learning and growing and what I do now. And I'm just, I'm just thankful. I'm truly thankful today. Anyway, enough about me. Let's talk about the topic of today. Today's topic is on reconciliation. What is reconciliation? When you reconcile with someone, you're trying to make amends. You're trying to right a wrong that you may have done against them, and you want to find a resolve, regardless of what that resolve is. You want it to be closed. It's like trying to close an open wound and make sure that the sutures are where they're supposed to be, so that way everyone walks away feeling like there was some sense of closure to something that was festering and hurting and causing more damage than good. So let's talk about five steps to reconciling with someone or some a, a group of people because you may have wronged more than one person. So this is possible. We're human is a thing. Okay. So step one, Acknowledge and own your faults in the situation. Be honest. Now, this is a step before you actually reach out to the person to talk. If you realize that you've done something wrong towards someone else, if you realize that you messed up, you need to be able to humbly accept your role in the process. If you're not able to be honest about what you believe you did, then this whole process is going to go straight in the basura, okay? It's going to go in the trash, not going to be great. So getting to a space where you can reflect on what you really think from your perspective, because really that's a a one-sided process, but you can sit and acknowledge what you did, what transpired, how your role affected the situation, And sit in that space of acceptance of that truth as far as you recognize it to be, okay? So that is step one, the acknowledgement and the ownership of your part in honesty and with humility. Step two, forgive yourself for messing up and hurting the other person. This is something that I believe years ago, I would have thought to forgive myself at the end of this process or not even think of forgiving myself. I would have beat myself up and gone through cycles. That's why I believe that forgiveness of yourself should come second because Once you've acknowledged your role and you believe that you really did something that was hurtful to someone else, it can feel heavy coming to terms with that. And it's better to forgive yourself on the front end before you even go through the process. So that way you're not reliant on the outcome of the process or or the process of the process to dictate 
the forgiveness you think you should have or shouldn't have. You need to be forgiven. This is not about deserving. I don't like to tell people that they deserve or don't deserve something, especially when it comes to forgiveness, because in reality, let's be real, we're human, we're flawed, we're sinful creatures. No one deserves anything in this life. Even as hard as we work, the things that we do, we don't really deserve much of anything. We should just be grateful that we have breath in our lungs to do and be anything in this world. That's a gift. So being forgiven is a choice that you can make for yourself. And that way, regardless of how the process goes, you're secure in yourself. You've made amends with you. You've apologized and made amends with yourself in your role. That way, moving forward into the rest of the reconciliation process isn't dependent on the process. It's not, it's not waiting for the process to tell you how you need to feel and how you need to be and how you need to act. That's step two, forgive yourself. It's okay that you've messed up as long as you've learned from what you did. Okay, make sure we're always learning. That's what we do here on this show. We make steps, we make our these fossils, and we try to extrapolate the lessons that are crucial for moving forward. That is what we do here. So forgive and learn, okay? Step three is to reach out. <laughs> reach out to the people, the person that you've wronged, whether that's through a call, a text, an email, maybe sending them a DM on their social media because please, please don't look desperate trying to post all up on their wall, is on all their posts. It's just so awkward. Don't, don't, don't do that. Do it privately. You don't have to do any grandiose gestures. That, that always seems like a lot and very cringy when you see people do that. You can also go to them in person if you feel like that's a safe thing to do and is appropriate to do. But reach out and ask permission to talk, to actually have a conversation, whether that conversation is on the phone or on FaceTime, Zoom, Google Meet, Hangout, whatever, in, in person at a coffee shop at their house, at, at the church, in the park. It doesn't really matter. As long as it's appropriate, it's safe, and you guys can agree on a, a place to have that conversation, but just to ask permission to have a conversation. Reach out and ask because no one is forced to go through this process. It's always an invitation. It's always a an extension of an olive branch to someone else to say, I want to invite you into this space where we can heal this wound, however that looks moving forward, or at least close it. So we can heal in the ways that we believe is best. We believe our best. <laughs> so let them have that time to process the request and be patient. You should probably make sure that you're pretty patient and cool and calm before you reach out because it can sound really desperate and overwhelming. And if you're anxious, it can actually turn the other person off and Make them feel like you're not actually ready to have a conversation or it's just going to be more of the same. And that might not be your intent. It might just be you're overwhelmed and you want to get, get it over with. I say that because if you've been in conflict with people of different personality types, there are those who, when they realize that they've done something wrong or that something needs to be discussed, they want to discuss it right now, right then. Get it over with. I want to get to the good part. Like, let's have the conversation. I don't care how long it takes for us to hash it out. Let's just get through it and let it be messy, let it be whatever it is. As long as we're talking, we come to a resolution and then we can do whatever afterwards. Then you have those who are very overwhelmed and need time to sit back, process through their own emotions make sure that they're in a great headspace, make sure that their emotions aren't going to be inappropriate in the moment and that they're not flubbing over all of their words. They want to be collected. So that might take time for them. That might 
not even be the same day or even the same week. It could be a while, depending on the gravity of the situation. So both sides need to have patience with one another. The eager beavers that want to just get it over with have to slow down, be patient, try to reach out in a cool, calm manner, but with sincerity to have the conversation without being defensive. And you also, also, hopefully, because you've had the time to do step one and two, you've already had the time to process for yourself your part. So, okay, to be fair, that's probably also why you would want to be eager to get through the conversation and get it over with because you've processed. But remember that if you're extending this olive branch to have the conversation, the other person may have been thinking about it, but they may not have gotten to the space of like calm acceptance of what happened yet. And they deserve that space. They may have, they may be ready to have the conversation because they have, they've processed it and they've cooled down. It just depends. Okay. So at the end of the day, make sure you're exercising patience in your ask and you're reaching out to have this conversation to let them process the request itself and the idea of having that conversation. Now, they might say that they really don't want to have the conversation. They'd rather just, cut their losses and move forward or whatever. And you have to respect that. That's very challenging, but you should respect where they are with the process. That might change later. They might come back and say, okay, I'm ready now, whatever. But if they decline the request, then that might be the end of the reconciliation process. It might just stop there or just it didn't actually transpire, which is why step two is very important to forgive yourself depending on how the rest of the process goes, because it might not go smooth sailing to the end. Now, if they are gracious enough to oblige and say, yeah, let's have this conversation, schedule that time, or say, I'm ready now, however that looks, because again, it depends on the situation. But once you're in that space of having a conversation, please don't do it through text message. Don't do it through anything that could lose. You could lose the sentiment you can lose the the tone of voice through different aspects unless truly it's the only option you have like if there's some reason with the connection or being able to talk with each other a certain way or it might just be we need to wait for a certain time when we do have a means to talk for real for real without disruption just make sure that the setting is appropriate and you're not losing the tone of voice in what's going on so that that's a that's just a tip. But once you're in that space to talk, step four of the process is to speak honestly and own your faults with them without it sounding backhanded. OK, you want to continue to stay humble in asking for forgiveness and to reconcile. And you want to be honest throughout the process. So what do I mean by owning your fault with them. Well, basically doing step one, but in front of them is what I'm saying. Make sure that whatever you came up with in step one, whatever you processed and and took ownership of in step one, do that with them and continue to stay honest and humble. Don't all of a sudden become defensive and hysterical and all those things if you can avoid it. That's hard. Some of us, we'd be crying because you're overwhelmed in the moment. You didn't expect to be Do what you can to collect yourself if you say, you know, give me a moment. I need to compose myself and I'll be right back. And I'll, you know, talk when I can put my words together again. It's okay to step away for a bit, collect yourself, breathe, come back and try again. But just make sure that you are in a level headed space to have this conversation with humility. But what do I mean when I say, not la- allowing what you say to sound backhanded. This is what I mean. So, for example, don't say something like, I'm sorry that what I did made you feel X, Y, Z. Or I'm sorry you felt that way. Oh, that's, ooh, that's trash.com. Don't do it. Don't do it. Because you're now blaming them for what you did. And that it may come out that way, like what, you, what you're what you saying, and you don't realize that that's, that's how it comes off. So I just want to make sure that you're aware of the wording that you use in case you don't realize that that's what 
you mean when you say things like that. Because what when you say, I'm sorry you felt that way, you might sincerely be meaning like, dang, I am so sorry that you did feel that way. Like, inflection also matters, guys. Versus, I'm sorry that made you feel that way. Like, like no. So just make sure your wording and your inflections are going to have to matter in that. A different way you could say you're sorry is something like, I'm sorry that my my actions cause this outcome and that I'm sorry that you did feel this way when I did this because I recognize that my my role in what I did did affect you in this way negatively and I'm so sorry that I did that to you. I'm so sorry that what I did enacted this or, you know, it causes emotion to come up or the sentiment to come up or this thought to come up for you. And I did not mean for that to happen. Inflection matters. You can literally make a statement sound backhanded just by inflection. And you can also make it sound sincere just by inflection. But blaming them and saying, I'm sorry you felt that way, that's not great. I'm sorry what I did made you feel that way can sometimes sound backhanded and sometimes not. But just saying, I realized that what I did was wrong or that it caused X, Y, Z to happen. And I take ownership of that. Even using words like I take ownership of that, I'm sorry. And I take ownership just to be clear in case you're not sure that what you said was backhanded or not would be safer than to say something and then it come off wrong. Just own, own it own it, own it. Okay. Make sure you own your part. This might take some time to really think before you speak, which is absolutely fine in this process and probably very important. Think before you speak, stay humble in the process. And step five, the last step is to give them the time to respond and make a decision on what should happen moving forward. Because They also deserve to say their piece. They also deserve to say what they want to happen and what they're comfortable with. So everyone has an opportunity in this space to to share their thoughts, their emotions, their processing on what happened. They might share something with you that you didn't even think about, you didn't even know, you didn't realize, and a lot of clarity can occur in this space, which can make the reconciliation process a lot better, a lot easier, a lot more fluid than the one-sided process you went through on step one. That's why opening up the dialogue brings a clearer picture to the full story, the full situation. So now you're not just coming from your perspective. But then hearing their perspective and going, oh, is that what, is that how you were feeling? Is that what you thought? I didn't realize. I didn't, wow. You know, and it could just enlighten everyone in the process. So that experience of making sure that no one's interrupting the other person, let everyone speak through what is going on, what happened, what transpired from their perspective and merging these two perspectives together to figure out what is the what is this mosaic painting of of this ugly situation and let's let's step back and look at it together that's where reconciling occurs now at the end at the end the decision on what to do now that the conversation's been made First off, forgiveness is an ask. Asking for forgiveness, no matter what, even if, even if you disagree with what is said, to just ask for forgiveness anyway, because their point of view and your point of view both matter in this situation. One's not necessarily less right or less wrong. They're just different perspectives because you're different people. And to ask for forgiveness and and using that as a way to validate where the other person was based on their perspective is crucial no matter how the rest of this process goes and it might be as simple like no sweat it i forgive you let's move on and we're good or 
it might take several steps to rebuild the trust. And it also might mean that forgiveness happens or doesn't happen or that you reconcile that relationship or you don't. It might just be like, I, I can't handle this and I, I'm just going to take it for what it is and cut my losses. That's why step two is important to forgive yourself in case it doesn't end out positive or the way that you envision in your mind that it would or should or could go. It's it's crucial to make sure that you're not waiting for the results or the process to dictate how how you walk away from the situation. You might still have to process the situation afterwards, but it shouldn't be the determining factor on on how you move forward personally. This process can go long. The, the the reconciliation process itself, it can be a long process. It can be a short process. It can be a process in parts. It really depends on the situation. The conversation might even be short. It might even just be like, I'm sorry, and I'm sorry, and forgive me, forgive me, let's move on. Which is fine. There's nothing necessarily wrong with going straight to the like, it doesn't matter what happened, it's all good route. The only thing that makes me nervous about that route is that we don't learn. We don't always learn from what happened. So I think it's important to find out, even if the conversation is short, it doesn't have to be long and detailed and drawn out in hours. You don't have to do that unless you truly think that works for your situation. But if you can ask or find out what you did wrong, you're not sure. Maybe you're not sure what you did wrong coming into this process, but you know something happened. You want to make sure that you figure this out or maybe you come in thinking you know what happened and then you come to them and it's not at all what you thought. That's also a possibility. So at least taking a little bit of time to find out so that way you can do better moving forward for your own growth, for your own learning, and for the the protection of that relationship or any relationship that you have in the future. Learning is crucial in reconciliation. Learning in humility, learning in honesty, learning in love is is so foundational in this process. Now, reconciliation, this is a process that I feel like I've been learning a lot about over the last few years. And as I've learned and grown in this process, again, it's different for each situation. And each situation has a different outcome. It has a different flow, a different sentiment, depending on the type of connection or relationship that you have. But there's always something to take away from those experiences. There's always a means to self-reflect on how you handle a situation. And it allows you to mature in this process. When we're kids, we can be really defensive and flippant. And even as adults, sometimes we can do that. But the more that we're choosing to humble ourselves and learn throughout the process, no matter what, reconciliation does get easier. It does get easier to go through. That's it for today's episode. I I just wanted to talk you guys through that process in case you're struggling or have struggled in the past and have tried to figure out how to do this. So are you in the process of needing to reconcile with someone? Are you dreading having this conversation? Are you really confused and you'd have no idea what's going on and you want to figure out how to make things right or at least ask for forgiveness and learn from the mistakes that you may have made let me know let's have a dialogue about this shoot me a dm on social media send me an email go on my website go on my social media post talk to me let's have let's, let's talk about this because i want us to do better I want us to be better in waving our olive branches and not feeling like we're always in the right because I don't know if anyone's told you this. You're not always right, (laughs) boo-boo. Neither is the customer, but that's neither here nor there. We're not going to talk about that. That's a whole other podcast. (laughs) But yeah, we have every opportunity to sit back and learn from our mistakes, swallow those pills because... They can feel like horse pills, you know what I'm saying, going down. 
but it it's it's crucial to sometimes be a little bit uncomfortable for the sake of a breakthrough for yourself and a moment to grow and be a better you than you were yesterday. So thanks for listening to the episode. If you have any questions, suggestions, comments for this show, for my other show that I'm starting, for my YouTube channel, send them to me. I want to hear from you. Again, you can reach out on my website. You can follow me on socials at Candice Olushala. You can check the link in my bio on my Instagram, and it has all the ways that you can basically get in contact with me. I would love to hear from you guys. Otherwise, guys, take care, stay safe, God bless, and here's to 100 more episodes, guys. Bye!